Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we will be talking about INFPs and ISFPs and introverted feeling. What is this process and how can we understand it from a metaphorical standpoint? How does it work and how does it manifest itself? Truth it is, it doesn't manifest itself. Carl Jung wrote about this function that still waters run deep. Introverted feeling is generally something hidden from the rest of the world, but not necessarily from everybody. When you use introverted feeling, you generally seek distance from the world. You sit on top of the roof, looking out over the city at night when nobody else is watching. You look at the world from a pair of binoculars. You climb up a tree. You climb up a mountain, looking down at the city, looking down at nature, studying the animal world, listening to the birds chirping, studying people from a distance. The INFP, the ISFP is always studying the world from a distance. Listening when nobody thinks anybody is listening. Watching when nobody thinks anybody is watching. And no, I don't mean for this to sound that creepy. Now everyone's gonna look at this video and think INFPs and ISFPs are stalkers. No, they're not stalkers, they're not stalkers. That's not what I mean. I just mean that when a um, feeling perceiving type listens, photographs others, maps others, studies others, studies the world, the INFP understands that if the world knew they were watching, they would act differently. They wouldn't act as naturally as they would if they thought nobody was watching them. Generally the INFP or the ISFP is the person walking around in school, just observing, just listening, just being around, just trying to see people and the true version of others. And the INFPs are interested in what's natural, the natural expression of a person, the natural expression of animals, the natural way of life when it's untarnished, uncorrupted by the observer. INFPs and ISFPs are not interested in gossip about people. They are interested in the true version of people. The INFP and the ISFP aspire towards that moment of true, full listening. And so there is no greater harmony for an INFP than to accidentally stumble across someone playing a guitar or singing when nobody is listening. There is no coincidence that INFPs are sometimes called wallflowers. They can be inside a room without being noticed by anyone. They can be present without being present. Throughout uh, my discussions with INFPs I've noticed that almost all INFPs I've met have been attracted to the bird symbol. Perhaps they dream of being transformed into birds and being able to fly across the sky and to be a around, to be anywhere, to be everywhere, to be in people's lives, to be able to follow people as they're wherever they go. The thing about being a feeling perceiving type is that you are, in all definitions of the word, a reporter, someone that listens to what other people say, someone that listens to people's actions, studies people's actions, studies how people talk, how people move, how people express themselves, and Go over it, searching for the true intention, the true meaning of everything. The feeling to perceiving type is going through everything you say, wondering if it's true or false. Was that right or wrong? Was that true or false? What did that mean? Did you mean that or that? Did he mean that or that? Did he say that and then that? Why, how did he say those two? Those two don't match. The INFP is processing intentions, processing feelings searching for the true essence of why a person says the things they say, do the things they do. It all comes down to authentication. Authenticating each statement a person gives one at a time. And it's not just that INFPs want distance when they listen, but it's also that they want time to figure out what they want. INFPs want to make sure that they want what they want and that they know why they want what they want. It comes down to making sure that your intentions are honorable, that you are authentic in what you say and do. That you have some semblance of right and wrong on your side. And a vital part of this is simulations. 
INFPs are constantly running simulations on scenarios trying to figure out what would occur if the settings were slightly different. INFPs and ISFPs are generally fantasizing about relations, running through a relation in their head to see how they would act in such a situation or how the other person would respond in such a situation. There is also an aspect of regret to this in the sense of what could I have done differently in that situation? If I had known myself better, if I had understood the other person better, what could I have done or said to remedy the situation? If I knew what I felt about the person, could I have said something earlier to have made something better? Two particular intelligences are of vital importance to the INFP and the ISFP. Intrapersonal intelligence, which is how well do you know yourself? And interpretative intelligence, how well do you understand other people? Do you know what different words mean? Do you know what different actions mean? Do you know what someone means when they say something in a certain way? Do you know when a person means yes and do you know when a person means no? And INFPs and ISFPs do tend to be people that make other people feel truly understood. In part because INFPs don't just listen to what you say, but they also listen to what you mean behind it all. They also listen to your intentions behind what you say and do. And they also ask themselves why you said what you did. And we all know that we don't always say what we mean, and we don't always know what we mean. We do things sometimes, but we don't always understand why. And it is the INFP that helps us understand why. And perhaps because of this, INFPs tend to be described as healers. Because often when we've done something stupid, or when something ridiculous or horrible has happened, often the only thing that can heal us is that understanding of why? Is that understanding of the reason behind it? INFPs can make what feels pointless have a point. And so perhaps the best metaphor for introverted feeling is water. Water that is shapeless, that can take on any form. Water that runs deep, often without saying a word. Water that gives us a true reflection of ourselves, back at ourselves. The us that is truly us. The us we see when we look down at ourselves without seeing ourselves from the persona that we are trying to portray to other people. Water that can rise and take on a human form, a reflection of ourselves, showing us what wounds we have in ourselves that we need to heal, what issues we have that we need to confront, what imperfections we have, and how beautiful we are. And it is generally only after meeting an INFP that we can truly be ready to confront things in ourselves, mistakes we did, things we did wrong. Because there are so many things that we do that we try to hide from ourselves and from other people. And there is another metaphorism to water that I love. The cleansing effect of water. You know when you take a shower and you come out and you feel like you are relieved of everything that happened throughout the day. You feel like you've restarted, that you are a fresh person, that you are a fresh you. Uncleansed, untarnished. And so it's equally important for an INFP to understand that they need to maintain this well. They need to man maintain this water. They need to keep themselves clean. They need to keep themselves untarnished. And important parts of this is allowing yourself to hide, to have secrets from other people, to take your time to process, to allow yourself to distance yourself, to allow yourself to step into nature, to relax, to breathe, to simply watch and see and learn. You have an instrument that helps you understand disharmony, an incongruence, an inauthenticity. But that requires careful maintenance, because if your instrument is wrong, you are going to be projecting things onto others that aren't real. If the water that is you is dirty, what you see in others is also going to be dirty. And that is also why it's so important to relieve yourself, to refresh yourself, 
to keep yourself still. And in all of these metaphorisms, it's important to understand the role of extroverted feeling to an introverted feeling type. What is extroverted feeling then, you might ask? Well, extroverted feeling is like a sun on the top of the sky. Extroverted feeling is like a star during the night lighting up the sky. Extroverted feeling is this incredibly bright function. It is this fire warming everything up, lighting everything up. If introverted feeling is tranquility, extroverted feeling is passion and warmth. Extroverted feeling is always seen by everyone. It is always present. It's easy to look at. It illuminates everything and everyone. Extroverted feeling is quite the performer. It makes itself known and it makes an impact, but it is very easily misunderstood. It is easy to look up at the sun and to judge and to make accusations. Everyone tends to have an opinion about extroverted feeling. Because we tend to know everything about it, it's easy to look at it and say, oh, it should do that, it should do that, it should be that way, it should look that way, it should talk that way, it should speak that way. But with introverted feeling, we never really know anything. So as an INFP or an ISFP, extroverted feeling represents something that is both scary and fascinating. Around extroverted feelers, it's easy to get a little self-conscious and to get, feel a little ashamed about yourself as they look at you and as they see you as you are. But there is also a fascination with the warmth and a desire to stand near it. It is generally only in that intersection where the light of the sun and the clarity and transparency of the water meet that reflection and insight and awareness is possible. And so as an INFP or an ISFP who steps too far away from the sun and who hides too much from the world, everything tends to just become black darkness. But for the INFP or the ISFP that moves too closely, there is a chance to become tarnished or burnt by it, to lose your ability to give a true reflection of what it is you see. So there is a dance mechanic between these two functions, where extroverted feeling acts as the muse of the introverted feeling type. And so INFPs and ISFPs, your goal around this muse is to learn to be yourself around this presence, to show yourself but to maintain your distance and to maintain your transparency in the process. To continue to reflect the truth and nothing else. To recognize what is right with no distortions or projections. To truly listen to others, but not in a way that makes other people feel judged. Because when they begin to feel judged, that's when they start acting in a way that is fake or unright. And that is also when you start losing grasp of what is true and what is false. So hopefully this video can take you a little closer to learning that truth. Hopefully it can give you some insight into who you are as an INFP or an ISFP. So that's all for today. Stay frosty and do tune in for the live stream that I will air in about two hours from now.